We are coming up to the exam season. In fact, when we come back after the break, you only have seven days until the higher prelim. So over the next couple of days, fingers crossed, everything goes according to plan. I'm going to put up a couple of these videos, which will essentially be an analysis of some key quotes from both Tess and The Crucible. We'll kick off today with a quote from The Crucible. Do keep checking back, and as soon as these are finished, I will post them for you to revise with. The first quote we're going to look at is, as I say, a quote from The Crucible. It's from Abigail Williams in the scene where John rejects her and makes his position perfectly clear regarding how the two of them stand. And the quote is from Abigail. She says, I look for John Proctor that took me from my sleep and put knowledge in my heart. I never knew what pretense Salem was. I never knew the lying lessons I was taught by all these Christian women and their covenanted men. And now, you bid me tear the light out of my eyes? I will not. I cannot. You love me, John Proctor. And whatever sin it is, you love me yet. This is an interesting quote, and one which you would do well to incorporate into essays which look at um, the nature of obsession, the nature of Abigail's love for John, uh, the importance of the name and the reputation within Salem, uh, and other essays which are kind of loosely connected. Okay, so within that quote we need to have a think about some of the key words. Remember at higher it's all about digging out the analysis from key words. And the first section of that quote, Abigail makes reference to the pretense of Salem, uh, the lying, and the fact that she was asleep before she and John had their affair. Abigail has identified the hypocrisy of Salem and the fact that they, the inhabitants of Salem are perfectly willing to use their religion and their faith to cover up more humdrum, we would say more corporeal, uh, motives. And Abigail hates Salem, Salem for this. And this is of course later developed when we see the townsfolk who are willing to use again their faith in order to um, settle their personal differences. We see the hysteria of the witch hunt being used uh, in order to advance one man's claim for land against his neighbour, and so on. And early on in this speech we can see the roots of that. This is the foreshadowing of the fact that Salem is outwardly a very religious place, but the people within that community are willing to use their religion in order to better their own position. And Abigail, whether we like her or not, she at least is able to come out and say, this place is a fraud. The, these people are no more holy uh, than anyone not living here. I want to look at, now at the quote where Abigail says, Oh, you've done all of this. You've woken me from this sleep. You put knowledge in my heart. And now you bid me tear the light from my eyes. Throughout the play, knowledge is equated with light and a lack of knowledge, or rather superstition, is equated with darkness. So in this case, Abigail is saying, how can you ask me to unlearn the things that you have taught me? How can you ask me to go back to the darkness, the ignorance I lived in, now that I know the truth? And of course, it's an impossibility. Once you know something, it's, it's almost impossible to not know it again. So in this sense, we, I mean, Abigail's actually reasonably sympathetic at this point. We can, t at least to an extent, understand her point of view. But when she continues, she actually goes on to talk about how the depth of her affection for John and her obsession. At the moment, we don't see it fully as obsession, but we do see this intense affection she has for John Proctor. She says uh, she, she will not and she cannot go back to the person she was. Now, the two um, words will and can obviously have very, very strong individual uh, significances. She's not capable of going back to being the Abigail before 
the affair with John. And more importantly, she cannot do that. Her affection for John is so strong that she is unable to go back to being the person that she was. So where does that leave her? If she doesn't want to and she cannot go back, we know from that point that the relationship will only lead in one direction, and that is, of course, to the catastrophe which is unveiled in the coming acts. And, of course, building to the final line where she says, Whatever sin it is, you love me yet. Whatever sin it is, you love me yet. Whether in the eyes of her faith it is a sin or not, and more importantly, in John's eyes, well, in Abigail's eyes, she thinks that John, even if he believes it a sin, he is still in love with her. Now, of course, John is being very, very direct that he does not. But early on in the play, there is this, there's still this lingering sense of flirtation between the two of them. So, again, we can understand Abigail coming to these conclusions. However, John, shortly afterwards, very much ends the affair. But again... Early on, we can see that Abigail is not an unsympathetic character. It's only as the play goes on and the body count starts to pile up that she becomes this absolute lunatic. The last point that I want to make on this particular quote is the notion that Abigail is making that love, whether it's her love for John or the love that she believes John still has for her. It has no respect for religion. Love is something which operates outside the boundaries of rules, whether they're created by man or by God or whoever. Love is an independent entity and you cannot fight against it. And even if you will, there's every chance that you can not. Love is the most powerful force that runs through a play. And it's interesting to note the differences between uh, John's affection for Abigail and the way that that disappears. Abigail's obsessive affection for John and the way that magnifies. And also the faithful love that John and Elizabeth share, which we'll maybe come to in a later clip. hope this has been useful. As I say, there should be more to follow.